We're here today to present you a little bit about um, building your own web or building your own app analytics tools. And first, a short introduction of ourselves. This is Monica Tudora, and um, my name is Matthias Huber. We're both working for one and one in the area of mobile apps. I'm on the more on the management side, and Monica as a developer for Android applications. And maybe I don't know who of you knows one and one. Raise your hand. Okay, this is good. This saves us a little bit of time. I can go through the following slides pretty quick, um, and then we we are. Um, earlier at lunch. So um, one and one uh, belongs to the United Internet Consortium. Um, it's one of the biggest hosting companies in Germany, uh, in, in Europe, and also one of the biggest in the world. Um, we have over 5,000 employees and we're delivering everything that you would need for accessing the internet, but also running your own business in the internet. Um, at one and one we develop our own apps for our customers and not only the typical ones that you would imagine for accessing your email uh, with a GMX application for example but also a lot of applications that might be useful for you as a hosting customer to check if your server is running to check um, the, the access statistics of your websites and maybe to order one or the other product. In this regard, we have recently developed a new application called One in One Insights, which is a web analytics tool. Um, it's available for Android and iOS on the App Store. You can download it right away. And it helps you to get an insight of how much page views do you have on your website that is hosted at one and one and um, where does this traffic come from so it shows the refers uh, it shows the most visited pages and it does this in some very nice graphics they are all animated um, you can play with them and um, so we, we try to make this as interactive as possible so now we're coming um, to the topic of this talk actually when, I, when you invent such an application, of course you're interested in how this application is used um, by your users. And for this, usually you would use one of those analytics tools. Um, I think more or less everybody has heard of them already. Please raise your hand if you have so, okay at least more than half of you. Okay, those tools allow you to gather information from the customer's device about um, what is the usage, um, which functionalities has been, have been used at which time, um, and how often. How often is the user accessing and, and using the app? Then also some information about uh, the device details like uh, which operating system is the user running, um, from which country is he, is he using the app, etc. and so forth. So all this information is usually gathered by these providers somewhere in their data centers. It can be data mined and you can get some useful um, uh, findings out of this. So the question that I would like to discuss um, in this talk, and maybe later we could have a, a discussion about this together. Why should you build your own analytics tools if there are already quite some uh, service providers for this available on the market? So first thing is, and I think especially if you're a bigger company and you have some quite some, some policies on um, data security and all this kind of stuff, Maybe you don't, you don't trust external data providers. Um, you don't want to have user-sensitive data stored on some servers that are not belonging to you. So the solution would be build your own tools, then you own the data and you, you can be sure that nobody else is messing around with them. 
The second reason that, that you might have for building your own analytics tools is maybe you need something, some kind of, of metrics, some kind of data that you want to collect that um, one of the established providers does not support. So you have some, any kind of special requirements that those other providers cannot fulfill, do it your own and you directly build whatever you need. Then anything about the way data is collected, the way it is transferred, the way you can maybe also analyze the data that was collected. Um, when you build it, you can change it and adapt it to any requirement that may come up. And um, so you're not bound to a specific way of, of doing it um, if you use another service. And last but not least, and I think for, for everybody who is developing, um, this is also um, something equally important. You want to learn something, right? I mean, if you build it your own, um, you also gain more experience by it. Um, this is not to be under underrated. So what were, what were our own analytics requirements when we came to um, implementing our own solution? First of all, we were interested in um, a thing called hot maps. The idea is when you use, when you implement a new application and you create a fancy, cool new UI with some um, stuff like tiles that you could swipe, like we did in our application, how do you know that this is really perceived by the user in the right way? Of course, you could do expensive um, UI testing with with um, special setups, etc. Um, uh, invite. A, a, a representative group of users to, um, to your test lab and th then try things out. But this is all time consuming and expensive. Um, usually you would have um, some UI expert working on a concept, have a great idea, you implement it, and, but still you want to validate how well it is, rece um, it is received. For this, Hotmaps is a cool tool because it collects all the tabs and gestures that you do on the device and make this visible in an overlay um, directly on the screen. So the collected data will give you hints on if buttons are too small, if UI elements are at the wrong place, maybe the user um, thinks that a certain element on the screen is tappable where in fact it is not. Um, this helps you a lot to, to get insight into this and you can roll this out to your internal inside the company testing group or to, to, the, to um, the group of, of test uh, persons that you usually use for, for testing your application and you get immediate feedback. So very valuable. Second thing, you want to know about crashes, right? I mean. There are possibilities to collect crash information that are built in into the operating system or that, that, that Google um, offers. But maybe you want to get more details, you want to get um, the possibility to analyze stack, stack traces and all this kind of stuff. So build your own crash analytics um, into your um, analytics solution and then you get all this information. And last but not least, of course, you want to know if certain functionality of your app is used and how often and in which context. Um, so you want to really see the, the flow that the user follows through your application. And this you can do with um, just collecting any kind of data from arbitrary um, collection points within your, um, or trigger points within your application. So how did we do it? Um, the idea is simply you have an app and this app pushes the, collects the data and pushes this somewhere to a server. Uh, more in detail, in our case, as I mentioned, we have those three parts, those three data collection collectors that um, collects the data, 
push them to a, a class that we call the tools manager, which is just a flexible um, uh, manager where you can plug different collectors in. And this tools manager then from time to time, and you can configure this like, for example, at every app start or um, time-based, sends this data to an analytics backend. Um, the analytics backend is nothing special here, and we will not go into details here about the backend because I think you're all more mobile developers and not so much um, web uh, or, or, or server backend developers, but this is simply um, a REST-based um, service that takes the data and puts them into a database. Simple thing, there you can also use different um, service providers that are readily available outside there, something like, um, uh, sorry, I forgot the name. Okay, anyway, you'll find numerous on, on the web, no problem. Then I would like to hand over to Monica, who will give you a live demo on uh, um, and a little bit of, of coding, how we set the whole thing up on our side. Sorry. My laptop is too big. <laughs> Hello everyone. <coughs> Hello, my name is uh, Monica, and I will continue Matthias' presentation by showing you how you can implement uh, your own tools. Unfortunately, the internet is not very well working, so I will try not to use it very much at this demo. Uh, well, our solution is based on having a manager uh, that is uh, like an interface between the application and the tools. So it collects all the data, it stores it locally and periodically sends it to the server or on demand. So it's the ro uh, server's role to just interpret the data, unwrap it from the JSON and store it in a database or show it in some nice graphics. So for each tool we need uh, a common structure uh, like uh, the tool's ID, the tool version like you see here and the tool payload. So the payload it's just a list of uh, events for the statistics tool, a list of uh, points for the hot maps tool, or a list of crashes for the crashes tool. Uh, the data will be sent in JSON format. We just build a JSON here. We put a common header for all the tools because we need some important information about the device, like the application name, the OS name, the tool version, the device resolution something like that. And after that, we just generate uh, the whole JSON by adding the payload that I've talked about. Uh, this is all we need to do. And after that, we just send it to the server uh, through an async task and doing a HTTP POST method. So I wanted to demonstrate to you the, how we can use the tools manager uh, by just sending a hello world to the uh, server, but I think I'll do it uh, later after I uh, speak about uh, the hot maps, because I told you the uh, internet is not very well working. So uh, the hot maps uh, came from the need of analyzing the user behavior and um, the usability of your application. So by intercepting the touch events on your uh, application, you can just see what, which are the most popular parts and which are the parts that are not used at all. Uh, I think the hot maps came from the um, heat maps idea. Everybody knows what heat maps is. It's a graphical representation of data in different colors. So uh, you can uh, have a full range of colors. You can predefine them. And uh, let's say we have uh, the colors from uh, blue and then to green and then to red where there are the most uh, touches. Uh, the idea is to have a custom layout uh, that you will use in your application and uh, on which you can intercept uh, all the touches. So we have here the custom layout, which just extends the linear layout or a relative layout, whatever you want, and implements our uh, common component. This component will just return the tool name, the tool version, the tool payload, which is the list of uh, points that I 
uh, that we will collect. So uh, here we have, uh, you can see, I think, we have the show hot maps. So all we uh, do is just create a dialog screen. Uh, we load the data on it and we will show it. So on this dialog screen, we will uh, effectively draw those points to show uh, the most popular parts of our application. And of course, we need two methods, the on intercept touch event and the on touch event, just to gather all the touches on the screen. So we test if the data gathering is enabled, then we just add the point. You, we just add the point to the list. Does anybody know why it, in, some, in the one place is Eve and in one place is event so that I just cannot get copy paste right? Okay, so this is it. We have the custom layout. We can now go on and create our dialog screen. It's just a simple dialog. Uh, we have loaded the data. We load the data also on the view. And we can go on and initialize it. So we just create a linear layout and we add a view, a simple view, which will set as content view. So on this view, we will actually draw each point apart. So for this view, we'll draw on the canvas. We create a bitmap, we create a transparent uh, paint, and we will just draw direct. Uh, each point will have a different color, as I said. So we will have a blue uh, color for the uh, less uh, touches on that zone, and after that we will add green, uh, yellow, or red color. So, that, so we uh, should make the edges between the points more smooth. So we will just add a radial gradient with a transparent support base that we will set as a shader. And after that we will go on to draw each circle and colorize it. So we, the idea is to get from the uh, bitmap, we get each pixel. And for each pixel, we just compute its alpha. And depending on the alpha, we will determine uh, what color to apply on, the, on that pixel. So I just defined here some uh, ranges of, uh, range of values. So let's say for alpha smaller than 30, we will uh, just put the blue color. And after that, we'll add a little of green. And for the, small, uh, for the rest of them, we also put some red color. Uh, doing that, we will also, after that, we will also set the pixel on the bitmap. And this is it. We have done our hotmaps viewer. Uh, we can just implement it our, on our, our application. Let me show you first our application. So we only have this demo application with three tabs. Oh. Okay, that's good. Okay. So there's nothing uh, special about it. Well, I just put some images, text for demo purposes. Uh, we can now go back and see for the code. We will actually uh, put the uh, hot maps only on the first tab. For, on the other ones, is already there. So this is the layout for the first tab. As I said, we have to use the custom layout. So we will just put it there. Okay. And we now go to the um, test application. We, for the tools manager, we uh, first just have to um, register the manager. After that, we have to push the data to the manager and send the data to the server. So we register the manager only once per application. So we'll do it here at the application level. Okay, so we'll get the application context and the name. Okay, and after that we can go to the activity 
and just use it. So we have the custom layout, as I said, we have to initialize it. So this is it. And we say to it that we want to gather uh, the data. So, so this is set to true. And let's say that when we press on the options menu button, that we just want to show the hot maps. So we have here, we just push the data to the manager on the options menu button. And we will do this for the hot maps tool. We'll get the tool name, the tool version, and the tool payload. I'm sorry, the resolution is very bad and I can't handle it. Okay, and now we go and show the hot maps for the context. And we actually take the data from the manager, which just stored it locally. Okay, and we send it to the server. I said that we can send it on demand or uh, periodically, but I choose to send it right now to see if something happens. Okay, send. And that's done. We, couldn't, uh, we can now just test it on the application. Let's see if it works and that I haven't forgot anything. Okay, I'll switch here. So, what do you think when you see this screen? Uh, let's say that this text should be, I find that it should be scrollable. So, we try to scroll it. I have to scratch it a little bit so that <laughs> the demo will be uh, nice. Okay, and also maybe this text looks like a hyperlink. I don't know if it looks like that, but let's try to press it, maybe something happens. Okay, and let's see if, so as you can see, there are defined the zones where we have touched the screen. So we, we can clearly see that the user wanted to uh, scroll the text and also uh, the area from the title screen where the, uh, where the, where, where the touch is. So for example, for a, a designer, if uh, let's say that image was a button, uh, we can clearly see that no user has pressed on it, so it's not very intuitive that that image was a button. Uh, let's see another example on the other tab. Let's say this one. We have these uh, nice graphics, but uh, you would want to interact with them because uh, they don't show really anything right now. So maybe we can uh, do something with this slider and see some more data on the graph, or uh, we can just interact with the pie chart do some more of that, or maybe we can just try to swipe through the tabs. Okay. So we can again see uh, the use of the hot maps. So this is for the hot maps. I will now show you the other tab. We have here an Android button that says do not press. Of course, I'm going to press on it. And the application just crashed. Um, I'll, uh, I just started it again to show that it works. Okay, uh, so this was uh, this was the test for the Crashlytics tool. Um, I just need to know now if uh, the server is working. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what happened here. So let's try to reload it and hopefully that. Yay! So uh, the internet worked. Ah, oh. okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Sorry. So this is a very basic website where we just collected all the data in some graphics. We use some uh, PHP free libraries and um, also some um, uh, and the database. So for this um, first graphic, just show us. This uh, uses a different database because you can see here that we also used some uh, iPods, uh, the uh, Galaxy S3, and something like that. We just collected uh, the type of devices that used our application. 
on the next graphic, the next graphic, we have uh, shown the events. So this is for the statistics. Uh, how many users started the crashes tab? How many started the application? This is something like equal per percentages. And we have here the database where we have all the you know, fields that we would be interested in, like the, Android, uh, the OS name, the OS version, the pod maps, uh, the application name, uh, the, the resolution, and so on. Uh, we also have here, as you can see, uh, the stack trace and the date uh, where it uh, happened. We see that it was a null pointer exception at the on click of the, bot of the button. And we also collected the events uh, here. So this is just uh, some parsing of the data that was sent uh, to the server. You can do anything you want with it. Uh, for the hotmaps, we just showed the uh, activity in which we showed, uh, uh, for which we collected the data. You get a lot of points, and it's no use to show it here. So if I still have time, I'll I still have time. Okay, uh, I'll, speak, uh, I'll speak about a little about the crashes uh, tool. So has anybody of you used ACRA? Okay, so uh, this is what uh, we use. Uh, I, have, I haven't gone very much into detail uh, with it, but I have used uh, their sender. So their advice is just to create uh, your own sender uh, that is like a listener that uh, pops up when uh, a crash is sent. So. On, the, on their send method, I just uh, register all the um, uh, stack trace, and uh, after that, the tools manager just reads from it. And um, also, you have to add a simple annotation on the test application, like uh, the fields that uh, you want uh, the ACRA to send to you. Uh, personally, we don't need all this because we also have uh, we also collect the the app version code, the Android version, the brand. We just maybe need to know the stack trace and uh, the date when the crash occurred. So um, this is kind of it. Uh, Matthias, if you want to say the conclusions. Switch back. Signal? Okay, let's try again. Ah, okay, perfect. Okay, so that was a live demo um, coming from the last slide. Um, actually, what you have seen, um, it was not that hard for us to implement our own analytics tools. And it should be the same more or less for you. It's not difficult. So if you have any reasons for building your own tools, like I said before, you're not trusting external providers, um, you have special requirements, you want to be able to change anything at any time, then please don't hesitate to do it yourself. Um, there are some things that might help you on the way to do this. For example, using some open source libraries like um, ACRA that, that we use for um, collecting the crash data. Also, of course, you would use some uh, server-side tools um, like a standard um, LAMP installation with, with um, Apache, uh, MySQL, PHP, or whatever you want to use, um, or use an external provider um, or, or some, some, no, this doesn't make sense, <laughs> um, some kind of, of no SQL database if you want, um, everything is possible here. And if you want to host it on our one-on-one -on -one cloud server, of course, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, if you have any other questions, um, just feel free to ask them right now or after the presentation, come to us. Thank you.